As people continue to cut the cord and switch their TV viewing to streaming devices, it gives us advertisers another avenue to consider testing for brand awareness campaigns. That is why we're going to talk about Roku advertising in this video. We recently just got access to their beta, so we want to show you what this ad platform could do for your brand. Roku boasts that they can reach over 155 million streamers. And the beauty of it is we can track performance after users view your video ad. So let's hop in so you can get an understanding if Roku could be good for your campaigns. We are logged into the Roku ads manager. And since we just got access, I have done nothing within this account. But I did dig around a little bit before recording this video, and I kind of found out that before you can really do anything, like set up a pixel or create a campaign, you need to create a client. So we can go up to the Create drop-down button, and let's create a client. We see there's some mandatory information that we need to fill in. So there's name, and then we can do company. I'm going to skip email so I don't have to blur anything out, and then choose your country. If we scroll down a little bit. Then select an option that best describes the client's business. Note that once you select one of these options, you cannot change it. So if I'm pretending to advertise for myself, we don't have any apps or content on Roku, and then it gives us these options. So now I can just paste in our website, and then I can choose category. Not too many default options, so I'm gonna stick with other, and then I can save. In here, we have a client created. If you start going back to the dashboard, reporting, campaigns, whatever, you probably see up in the top navigation there isn't a section for clients. If you need to review your clients, you can go down to the little profile image, click down there, and there's where you can access your clients to get back to the same view we're looking at right now. You can also see we can create new clients, but it's easy to do from the drop down up top. Okay, we have a client created, so now let's look at creating our first campaign. I'm going to go back to create, and then choose campaign. We're gonna fill all the information here first, but then note the campaign details on the right will update as we're filling in the information. So we'll need a campaign name. Scrolling down, we see the creative type, not something we can change. And I'm clicking on it, and we're stuck with this. This is Roku, of course it's gonna be video. I scroll down a little bit more, we see market. At the time I'm recording this video, Roku ads is only available in the United States, but they do say you can only choose one market per campaign. So maybe that means we're getting different country availability soon. My video ads will be served on a CPM or cost per 1000 impressions. There we see placements. So as we get into the different targeting options and I start updating my audience, make note of the rate, which is in the budget and schedule section on the right hand side. And we'll see if it changes depending on what I input. I honestly don't know because I've never done this before. We're doing this together. So let me go down to targeting options. First, choose which types of audiences you want to include. And here we see a variety of demographics. I'm going to click and scroll down. We have a few options for gender. And then we see it broken down by just all adults and ages. There we see just the female gender and ages, then the male gender and ages. And then we get down to genre. So I want to make sure I'm choosing a few different demographics. So I'm going to go back up, just choose all adults. 21 and over. There we see I can X that out if I want to change it, but I can just click within the field again and then go back and I'll scroll down so we can get to the next targeting option, which will be genre. Which genre of content would you like to reach your user? You see everything from action, beauty and fashion, comedy, cooking, drama, home and garden, home shopping, horror, late night TV shows, news and weather, reality TV, pretty much a lot of the main TV categories that you can think of. If I'm looking at just the paid media pros, maybe I'll want to stick with business and finance. Seems like the best suited one for us. Let's go back in, keep scrolling down. There you have an option if you want to target sports enthusiasts. That's the only option under sports for now. And then looking at their viewer habits. They don't have cable. They do have cable. Are they heavy streamers or are they light streamers? Pretty narrow list of options. I'm a cord cutter, so I'm just going to select it just for fun. But then just like we can include audiences, we can exclude the same audience segments. So I could scroll down and say, okay, anyone 65 and over, I don't want them to see my ads. Let me choose one more. Anyone who's possibly into reality TV. No offense if you love reality TV, but maybe it's just not suited for the audience I'm trying to reach. And then you can get a little bit more specific with your geography. We already have the United States selected as our main market. So this geography section won't change your main market. It's just letting us be a little bit more specific. So you can see in the field, it says we can get down to the state city or zip code level. Pretty consistent with most of the other ad platforms. You'll have to just go and type something in like I did, choose your options. You can go back up, type in a few more. So now I just narrowed it down to a few states in the Midwest. Scrolling down a little bit again, and now we get to budget and schedule. One thing I always like to do when creating new campaigns, especially in a brand new channel, I always like to see the minimums. 
And there it is. Minimum budget allowed for Roku advertising is $500. That's not too bad for a test, to be honest. But it looks like this rate is locked in. 22 bucks for every 1,000 impressions. So let me go over and make this the minimum $500. And there we see the impression number has jumped up. Next, you can add start and end dates, as well as times, to your campaign. So just for fun, I selected the dates of when the Winter Olympics are going to be running. I'm not sure if this is the actual televised date, but I would do that research if that's what I wanted to do. And let's say in my targeting options, I selected specific genres. Definitely check the sports enthusiast box. Maybe be heavy streamers, people who are obsessed with the Olympics, whatever. And I know that the video I have really can correlate with the message and the mood that people are in if they may be watching the Olympics or any sports during this time. And that's just one example. Another easy one would be during specific holidays. If you have something to promote that fits Mother's Day, Father's Day, Halloween, Valentine's Day, Christmas, you get it. You can schedule your campaign to run before those important holidays to try to promote whatever product you have. And there you can see you can choose your time zone, pretty straightforward. But after that, we can go down to creatives. Since we're new to this, we're going to upload a video. And here's where we get the technical requirements needed in order for your video to be approved. We see that the video length needs to be in between either 13 or 17 seconds or 28 and 31 seconds. There's the 200 megabyte file size. We see the MP4 move files, ratios, bit rates, frame rates, all that fun stuff. Now this is Michelle and I, we don't have a typical TV commercial created. So let's see if I can find an MP4 of one of our old videos that'll actually work. Knowing that it would be disapproved, but let's see what we can do. Nope, they flat out tell me what's wrong. Okay, let's try to find another video. All right, we found one that worked. You can go up and preview it. It'll show you what your ad will look like on Roku, but there's no overlays. This isn't like Hulu where there could be some QR code or something next to it. It's just gonna be the video. So it's pretty much if you know what the video file is that you uploaded, it's just really gonna play that. But you can go up and press play and preview it and see if you like it. If the creative looks good, you can save it. And that's one option. You can go back like I am right now and upload another option. So you can have a combination between the two. And once these are running and you go back to the main dashboard, you can compare metrics. I'm gonna close that one out for now. The second option will be to just input your VAST tag URL. And VAST means video ad serving template. If you're already running video ads, it's easier to sync to your ad server, very common with third party tools, but that is the second option. And then your third will be for when you're running Roku for a while and you already have Video Creative uploaded. That way, if you want to reuse Video Creative in any future campaigns or future video buys, you can just select from that library. It's going to be saved within your account, and then you won't have to go back and re-upload everything. But when we're scrolling down here, we can see that we can set up the pixel. First, you'll select your client. There's a drop down if you create more than one, and then we can create the pixel. It's easy enough to click the purple copy button. There we see we copied the pixel code and I already have it implemented within Google Tag Manager. There we see I created a new custom HTML tag, pasted in the code there, and scrolling down, I have my trigger set to all pages. So there we can save it, submit it, and then I'll publish it. Just going back to the main pixel screen, each client will have their own unique pixel and it's really gonna be used to track website or conversion events, like overall page views and purchases. Like most pixels, it can't retroactively track any of the metrics, so get this thing added before you book or save any campaigns. Since Roku is app-based, the pixel can help track and attribute certain actions after the user has viewed your ad on Roku. So I'm gonna click done for now, and it could take up to an hour to see events on there. So I'm probably gonna have to come back to show the rest of the pixel setup. But just like you can set up events in Facebook and LinkedIn, you'll be able to track page views, have certain events fire when a form fills out, when someone adds to cart, if someone purchases on your website, you can set up those events here. And here we see I refreshed. So now we see some page view events are detected, but not any of the more specific events. So to update that, go back to setting up pixel. Here's where we were before, and then we can scroll down. Here's where you can copy a specific event that you may want to track, like a sign up, and then you'd place it after the main pixel code for whatever event you may want to do. And I'm really only familiar with Google Tag Manager, I apologize. But let's say for a sign up, still use the main pixel, but then add this additional line of code and then apply the trigger that would only fire when the user signs up. And as you scroll down, you'll see the options for video views, add to cart, purchase. And if you want, you can add the purchase value. But I'm gonna go back to Ads Manager and pretend to complete our order. There's a preview of what we're about to book. I can add it to my Roku Ads Manager cart. There we see I can continue to cart 
or build another campaign, but let's just continue. Review your cart one more time, and then you can proceed to checkout where you just add in your billing information and then launch your campaign. I don't wanna do that because this is just a demo. I didn't really create a legit campaign. But once everything is live and running, you can go back to your dashboard, I should mention that after you do pay and book your campaign, the campaign will be sent to the Roku team for a round of QA. You will get notified if your campaign is approved or rejected within a couple days. If approved, your campaign will launch during the dates that you have selected in the ad schedule. If rejected, you will be able to go back in, make the edits that you need to make, and then resubmit it for approval. But then once your campaigns launch during the appropriate ad dates, you will see metrics come through. All campaigns will be able to see impression metrics, video completion metrics. If you've added the site pixel on there, you'll be able to see page views or any of the events that you created, like add to cart, purchase specific web page visits, those sort of things. And you'll be able to view these metrics at the campaign and ad creative level. So you'll get an understanding of not only your targeting options, but what content resonated the most with the users who viewed your ads on Roku. And that is my simple run through of Roku advertising. It may be a little limited on what you can do in the platform, but this is still a very young ad platform. I know I really couldn't show you as much as I wanted to because I haven't run a full campaign yet. My goal was really to give you an idea of what you could do in the platform and what types of video creative are going to be necessary to even be able to run. Anyone out there who has also gotten access to Roku, if you have run campaigns on it before, I would love to hear how they've been working for you and see if it's good feedback to give to clients who are interested. So leave a message in the comments below and we can keep the discussion going. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.